Hi everyone, thanks for joining this group. And I am Ray Pan, the co-convener of the ACRL International Perspectives on Academic and Research Libraries. That's quite a uh, mouthful, but I am really excited to invite two speakers here. We have Sarah from Peru and Santiago from Colombia. And if you have any questions, please feel free to type in the chat. Uh, we're just gonna have them give presentations. And if you have questions, we'll have a uh, time for discussion. Hey, um, well, I'm from Colombia. I'm a, a librarian working with public libraries right now, but um, in, in projects within transformation, digital transformation in, in libraries. I work for my own company for around 12 years um, in the field of cultural marketing uh, and doing some design thinking experiences around the world. Um, to plan to strategic planning in libraries and in cultural institutions. Right now, I'm the director of one of the biggest uh, library networks in my country, um, making a, a, a profound transformation of the libraries in my city. So I'm, I'm, I'm really glad to be here. I have to say thank you to Ray and to ACLR to, to invite me to speak with you um, about the Colombian libraries. I don't know if I, I will start, I, I, I thought that it was Sarah, the first one. Sorry, I realized Sarah had more uh, content, so you, you can go first. Okay, okay, don't worry. Well, I, I want to tell you about the, um, what we are doing in, in, in libraries in Colombia, not only in, in public libraries, that is my field right now, but in, in all kind of libraries we are um, Right, right now starting to do some open innovation processes like the one that I want to explain you right here. And for that, let me, how can I, how can I control my slides? Do you see the slides on the, the arrows on the left corner? 
Yeah, I see. Okay, I know. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Well, I just I just want to to tell you that um, you know we are in a, a Latin American country. We are an, an emerging country, so um, we have no more people thinking about digital culture right now, like the one that you can talk about. Um, in, in, in particular, in my city, I live in Medellin, Colombia. It is the second largest city of the country. We have um, many libraries here developed, uh, in fact, after the, the drug wars that we lived in the 80s. And um, so we live in a city that has some kind of development in digital, in digital uh, technologies, in ICT appropriation and that. But our country is very different if you look for the uh, fields, the, the rural area or the urban area. If you, if you can go to see the stats, the statistics about Colombia rural area, you can see that we can, uh, for example, have internet connection for around half of the rural areas of our country. We have um, Amazon and forest, we have uh, very high mountains uh, in the Andes, we have uh, coastal cities in the Caribbean and in the Pacific. Uh, so we have many, many different cities, many different populations around our, our country. That makes it very difficult to ask to, sorry, I lost my present, I lost the slides. Sorry, keep talking, I'm gonna re-upload it. Okay, don't worry. So it's very difficult to, to, to me to say that um, there's a standard development in libraries in Colombia. So I will focus on Medellin. Uh, we are right now, if we put, if, if we put the develop of the uh, libraries in, in terms of the develop of the technology, as you can see here in this slide, we have around the 2.0, 3.0 development. What that means? That means that we are focused on interactions, we are focused on um, on make the people come to the libraries to produce, to create, not only to consume knowledge, um, but right now we are at the same time focusing on how to make more smarts the 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 ambient, the the all the feel of the libraries in the city, in our city. But if we go to Amazon, and for example, or or to the Andean region, you can see. Um, Many people working in, in the interaction. They are giving books right now. So when we developed um, the strategy for all our libraries in Colombia, we have to think in these very different realities. The way to think in these very different realities is to focus not in the technology, but in the digital cube. That means not in the device, but in the principle that you can use when you when you are not only using the device but when other people use the device and share these um, kind of results with you. Let me explain that better. We are talking about principles. The first principles that we are applying in our libraries is the personalization. This is a digital culture principle. Why is a digital culture principle? Technology isn't invented any new you know if you, you can you can in your in your head please make this exercise thinking any technology any kind of ICT any kind of technology that you that you uh, love or you hate or whatever and ask you this technology really invent something new my answer is no there's no technology that invented nothing new at all you can, for example, talk to me about the internet. The internet is only an amplifier. You no, know? the internet amplify um, all the the, the, the the things that we can naturally do in other means. For example, communication. We can do it not better, but we can do it faster, and we can do it with more information at the same time. That means that this technology, like the other technologies, are um, not any more than an amplifier, amplifiers of the things that we as humans can do and we did even before the technology. 
okay? So, personalization. In Colombia, you can see here two pictures. The, um, the picture above is the um, uh, Spain Library Park. We in Medellin have this public library called Library Parks. It's a mix with a park, a place that you can go and, and meet with people, a public space, and a public space that is complementary to the library. That's why we, right, we call it park libraries, right? We have nine private libraries right now. These private libraries are a very important part of the transformation that we have made in our city uh, at the end of the drug war, right? So, the personalization, what means in these libraries? We are doing not only libraries, beautiful libraries, as you can see here, are, we have nine, but I only put two of them right now here. One of those, the one above, is hike in the mountains. You can see it is like uh, uh, three stones in the mountains. Uh, and the other one is um, one in the rural area. It's like a, a small house. Um, it's, it's like more than the surrounding Indians, you know. Um, so we have to not only personalize the services of the libraries, know that we have to do that, but we want to personalize the architecture, the way that the libraries are um, created or built it in the surrounds. I have to say that we communicate park libraries. The one that you see, uh, like two rocks in the top, are um, one of the very first mistakes that we made. It's very beautiful in the architectural way, you know? But one, one thing that you can see here is that they have three different spaces. And if you go to the web page of our libraries, that is reddebibliotecas.org, is like librarynetwork.org in Spanish. If you go there, you can see that many of our libraries are building in these three different parts. One of those is the library itself, the collections. Another one is the ICT part, okay, so the information technology, the computers. Another one is the theater uh, and the galleries. So, if you divide these spaces, you are telling to the librarians and to the people that the ICT and the theater are not part of the library. This is a very big mistake, you know, because the librarian itself, we, we discovered that the librarians of our libraries was struggling to, to go to the people and ask the people, okay, don't go to the ICT room, please come to the library. Okay, you have to, you have to, you don't have to fight with the ICT rooms, you have to, at the same time, tell people to go to the ICTs and to come to the libraries, to the collections. So, we learned that a couple of years ago, and we start to, to do a very integrated building when you can see all these spaces, all the library books, all the ICT devices, mix it with the collections. Because the device is, is not the goal of the libraries. We are focused on the content. We don't we don't know if you want to do the, the um, consult in a, in a computer or in a book or you prefer the ebook or whatever. Uh, we have many different connections. We have many different formats. So we only have the space to allow the people to meet with others, to have conversations with others, to dialogue, to um, ask for knowledge and then create in the libraries, right? Okay, so this is the very first thing. We only personalize the experience within the libraries, as we will say you later on today, but we want to personalize the buildings 
who respond, answer to the they are right now. This is uh, the inside of one of the libraries. As I told you, uh, you can see these the collections, um, but the collections was uh, separated from the ICT computers. So fighting all the time to uh, bring the users to one or to another. Right now, if you go, I, I repeat it you to redbibliotecas.org, that's library network in Spanish, .org. You can see the many different libraries that we have uh, that mix the computers. Okay. I don't know why, is, why this is in Spanish. <laughs> I just, appropriation is the way that you can, is the second principle that we are uh, applying in our libraries. How can you make the people appropriate, uh, become, feel that they are part of the territories, okay, from the libraries? You can do that within the libraries, making some classical or traditional services like, for example, um, oral traditions uh, with the elders, um, uh, mix it with young ones that want to hear stories from their neighborhoods or something like that. But the very different and innovative way that we are doing that is decentralizing the services of the library. That means we are not only focusing on what we can do inside the buildings, we are going outside to do things like the one that you can see here. We are making maps um, with more than one of our libraries with the people of the neighborhoods that surround April Library. Let me explain that. Um, you know that we have this drug war in the 80s and the 90s. You know, we have very um, dangerous neighborhoods in our city. So many of the people there is in, in these neighborhoods can't go outside, don't want to go outside their houses, don't want to go to the libraries. Uh, they have feel that they can't even go to their schools. So some of the people in the neighborhoods don't know the story of the neighborhoods. So what can do the public library to make the people feel comfortable with the, their history. So we begin to make cartographic, cartographic exercises with young ones asking to draw their neighborhoods, to draw their stories, to take pictures of their neighborhoods, of their houses. So we teach them how to use the, the, the cameras, how to photograph the people, uh, how to tell stories around the photographs, and then we digitalize this content with OpenStreetMap in more than three of our public libraries around the city. Later on, the academic libraries of our city, I mean the um, libraries that are from one of the biggest universities of we have, they um, begin to support these exercises from the public library, bring some of their teachers and librarians to work together with the people of the public library. Because we know that the academic libraries, uh, in, in fact, many of the academic libraries in Colombia and in Latin America have more um, investments that we can have in, in the public library. So they're supporting these public services from the public libraries, making the community learn around how to take photographs, how to digitalize their stories in open map, how to, for example, make the schedule of these theaters, of the schools, of the high schools, all the all the events that happen around a neighborhood. So the people around these three very different libraries right now feel are feeling part of the neighborhood, are proud of the neighborhood, even if there was a drug war there. There was dangerous in some time. There was a little dangerous right now in some of these neighborhoods. But they are willing to defend the neighborhood because they are feeling part 
because of the library of this neighborhood. So this is the, another of, of, of the principles that we have that we are applying in our libraries is the ubiquity, you know. And this is one of my 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 preferred technologies in the world, you know. You're seeing right now a donkey. You know? This is a transport technology for me. This is one of the best transport technologies for me. Uh, maybe maybe it's not the newest one, you know. Uh, it's not ICT technology, but it's a transport technology. Why why is a transport technology for us? Because we have this very high mountain called um, Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta, the snow mountain of Santa Marta, is the um, closest snowed mountain to a beach in the world, you know. is you can see the snow from the beach in this Caribbean city. So it's a very, very high mountain. This mountain doesn't have any way to go up to the little towns that are there in the top of the mountain, right to the top. So you can use cars, you can use, for of course, helicopters for the cost of that, but you have to go there with books to allow the people to access to information and to access to some kind of technology like tablets and that. So these people are using for more than 10 years a network of donkeys, you know? They, um, every month, they select a little collection to go there, make some promotion, wedding promotion, um, Activities and to support the schools that are there in this mountain because the donkeys are the best technology to decentralize the services of the library. When we are talking about ubiquity, we are talking about how to be in the place that your user are right now. We are not talking about to be everywhere. We are talking about to be where your user are. So the users of these libraries, of the libraries of the High Mountain of Santa Marta, High North Mountain of Santa Marta, are in the mountain. So they have to be there. They can't go every day down to the mountain, to the city, and go to the libraries. So we, we want, and we are right now, bringing the library. Okay, the last one, okay, this is not the last one, but one of the, of the last principles that we are applying in our libraries is the transformation. We have to transform the spaces in our libraries. This is the, um, it's one of the libraries that are, uh, we are transforming right now in Confama. I'm the director of the library network of Confama. We are, um, I think we will, in a, in a couple of, of weeks, um, just have this library working um, I don't know but I can send you an invitation I don't know if you wanted to come from there from there to Colombia but it's one of the very different libraries that we are making right now in Medellin because we are thinking how to mix all these formats how to make a library look kind of a bookshop um, not only a library like a makerspace too, um, not only books in, in but of course ebooks and um, and interactive screens. So you can see a a, a library which right right here. Library, I think we will have around ten thousand books here. Uh, I mean printed books. But we have uh, access to more than uh, three, five thousand um, ebooks and items here, um, because we are making a balance with digital and printed in our library. And if you, if, if you can go, I don't know if, if we can, but if you can see the top, um, you see that the books the most of the books there are not uh, are showing the um, the cover, you know, because we don't want to be, um, you know, the place 
to save books for the users. We want to put books as a gallery, okay? We want to use the book as, as a part of, the, of a comic that um, itself is telling a story, you know? We are using this kind of uh, storytelling, temporal storytelling, displays of the um, display of the book, because, for example, May of city of sixty eight. You know, in May of sixty eight, one hundred one ninety sixty eight. You know, in Paris we have the revolutions. We have the students' revolutions. So this year we. We celebrate the 50th anniversary of that. How can we tell the story of these revolutions in our libraries? Not only in one place, but in all the library, in the world the library. Okay, so we think, why don't we put almost all the books in the cover, as we put it in a... Um, In the entrance of the libraries, when we can, when we want to, to put newest selections to the to our users, so we are hoping that all the library acts as a gallery for the books. We are making the book itself an object for marketing. You know, that means that we have to maybe sometimes not only. Uh, make spaces for the books, uh, for the cover of the books, but make space in a room close to the library to keep some books um, I, don't, I don't know if you can if you can hear me, I just lost the sign out here they put red okay, okay. I'll tell you one of the things that we have that we want to do here is we are we we keep we we use Dewey number Dewey classification number we are using Dewey, but we don't want to organize the library from zero to nine hundred, right? Like the other libraries in the world, we don't want to put one shelf just um, side by side to another from zero, one hundred, two hundred. No, we want to link Dewey around that changes from time to time, a story that uh, tells about the context. If you, if you know, for example, that you want to put a library in a, in a neighborhood that really likes the urban dance, you have to make a story around the urban dance within the books, okay? So you organize the books in your library uh, in a way that the books itself tells a story of the urban dance and around the urban dance collection you can put for example the ballet dancing you can put the music uh, collection you can put the history of the music and then you can organize all your collection around a story that attracts the people to the contents that you want to teach them Okay, so it's about my. That's the way. Right. And the last one, I, I, I promise that I will. I don't know if I can send you the tickets, but I will invite you. We have here, we will have here, uh, another thing that we already have in the US. Workshops, uh, we will put um, art galleries, you can see above. Uh, at the right of the, of the photograph, the render, we have we have put some kind of games for the kids to learn. For example, the the laws of physics. Anyway, okay. And the last one, the last principles that we want to apply in our libraries and that we 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 are doing right now. I don't know what happens with the um, photograph here. Collaboration. An action that means that we are creating right now prototypes all the time in our libraries. 
we are not planning all the time, you know, because in librarianship and in um, engineer and in most of the careers that we took here in Latin America, they teach us how to plan very well all the time. So we took six months or a month or, or more planning how to do a thing very, very well. Um, but at the end, when we have to act, when we have to put this plan in action, we didn't do it at all. So how to prototype, how to act while you are planning? We are using design thinking for libraries right now. We are using this um, methodology that we developed in the Gates Foundation with IREX and another, an ideal. Um, I was there um, in the Gates Foundation when, when we developed this methodology. So we are using this in our libraries in Colombia. And uh, um, we are using the resources that we already have to put the things in action. Because, you know, one thing that I learn when I go around the world and seeing little libraries and big libraries is that the ones that are really innovative libraries are the ones that have less resources because they have to work with these resources to do the innovation. So the very, very first thing that I ask in every library I direct here is please ask you what can I do with the things that I already have and begin to act, do it, do it. Later on we scale. So we are using this prototyping model uh, to do libraries like the ones that you see. We are always learning from our mistakes and we are adopting some um, methodologies to make the people, make all the stakeholders part of the prototyping of the services design, of course, because they are the libraries itself. You know, we, one of the things that we have clear here is that the libraries are not the buildings. Libraries are us, the librarians, and what we can do for and with our people. Thank you very much. I don't know if you have any questions. I'll be here to answer you. This is me, you know, I'm, I have here, I have here in some, uh, when I was young, you know, so you, you, you see the photograph of the, uh, of the, the web conference, and that when I was young, I have some hair, I promise you, I, that's the truth. And you can, you can contact me in this mail, medellin at gmail.com, or in Twitter, I'm at medellin2.
Okay, thank you, Carlos and Selena. I don't know if I can uh, um, answer right now, or or Ray told me that it will be at the end of the um, of the Sarah speaking. Okay, so first, let me see the order. Okay, Carlos, yes, we have this uh, model that we call Library Park, or in Spanish, Parques Biblioteca in Medellin, Colombia. Uh, you, can, you, can, um, you can see some similar models in Colombia and outside Colombia. You know, there's a model in Bogota, in our capital city, that is called um, Mega Bibliotecas, like Mega Libraries. Uh, they have this similar um, goal to be not only a library but a public space uh, where the people can meet when they can um, make concerts and, and, and those things. And in Rio de Janeiro, um, they have um, um, an adaptation, uh, a model adapted from our park libraries model. You know, they come, they came here. Uh, I think around five or maybe more years, and they adapt this model to the libraries. They are working um, right now well. I don't I don't know if, if very well or, or only well because they having some problems with, with their funds. Um, but you know, I think there's there's a couple of, of different models in Latin America that you can read about. I have to say, for example, the Chile, the Chilean model from Chile. Uh, it's a very innovative model that um, not only thinks about the library as a public space, but the library as a, um, as a very different, um, I don't know how to call it, a, a, a very different summatory of formats and activities and services. Uh, if, you, if you can go to the uh, library of Santiago de Chile, you can see that they are doing things uh, very different from another public libraries in the world, even not only in Latin America. They're having, for example, some um, rooms within um, literature only for adults that, you know, in any other place in Latin America is, we can even think about that. Uh, and if you go to Rio de Janeiro, they are focusing on tourism, they are focusing on, on needs of the specific context with these library parks that they adapted from our model. So yes, uh, we have many different models in, in Latin America. As, as, a, um, as a former member of the Gates Foundation at the United Program, I can say that maybe the um, examples, the best examples of Latin America public libraries are uh, the ones in Rio de Janeiro, the ones in Santiago de Chile, and the, the National Library Network in Chile in general, um, the library parks model in Medellin, uh, and maybe some, some way the Uruguay model to support the OELPC um, uh, program that they have there, right? Okay, let me, if, if you have any other question, Carlos, I will be uh, answering you uh, by mail or in Twitter uh, when you want. At Medellin is my Let me answer Selena. Okay, Selena, the, the library that I show you here and that we are building right now will be placed in a, in a little town close to Medellin called Caldas. Is um, is a town from around uh, I think two hundred thousand citizens. Um, they have a, a very big rural area. So, for example, we we will we will have an experience around botanical gardens there in the library. We want to be one of the first green libraries in Colombia because we will have this botanic club. Um, not only teaching the kids about how to uh, how to make, for example, urban farms, 
but how to uh, make better uh, farms in the rural area. Okay, so uh, the other one is okay, Paula. We, we have digitalized content, yes. Right now we are in a migration pro process um, because I'm here in Confirma working since November. So I have uh, four months, maybe a little more, working here. I've been here working for four months or more. So right now we are Migrating to Alma. Alma is a software, an iOS from Exalibris. Uh, when we migrate to Alma, we will digitalize all the content that we have, um, the rights to own it and to digitalize it. Because you know, we in Colombia have one of the most right laws in, in Latin America and maybe in the world. So we have to we have to be careful with that, you know. But we will digitalize that. And if you go to umfama.com, umfama is the name of my my um, employer right now, and we will put there all this collection. I hope not only we will share it with the Columbia Library Networks, but if you want to access from your libraries to our collection of um, local stories of uh, local productions and even the ones that we contact from international platforms, we can talk about that in my email or by Twitter. Okay, and Paola, yes, yes, the University of Antioquia, yes. You know, I'm from the, I follow the University of Antioquia, and there's, uh, University of Antioquia is one of the biggest one, of the biggest, um, universities in Colombia is the second one in fact and it's uh, the only one that have library and information science here in Medellin so they are committed with the libraries with the public libraries right now and they are helping because they have a very beautiful academic library there so they are helping us the public libraries to make more impact in our communities right so Yes, Paola, I say Caldas. Caldas is the name of the um, little town close to Medellin that we will have the library work in, I think, in two weeks, maybe maybe a little more. Yes, I can, Diana. Let, let's, let's do it with, while Ray upload the Sarah presentation. Yeah, we have, we, we will, uh, we will not quit, do we, you know, we will, we are librarians, so we, we have to organize the knowledge. And so we will use do we to communicate with other libraries, because we want to take place in uh, public catalogs, we want to share information with other libraries around the world. That, uh, let me give you an example. Um, if you know that the people in Caldas, in our, our newest library, um, one of their patients is the uh, farming, uh, you want to tell a story around the farming. So, um, you just put the collection in farming in a way that appears in the center of the library. You know, when you go inside the library, you can see a lot of books around the farming processes, around the farms, around history in farms, uh, with the covers telling you a history like comic, you know, like, like units of the comic. Uh, but around the farm collection, you have to put all the other topics that you want to uh, teach the people um, because you can't have a collection only in farming. We are not a specialized library. 
we only use this topic to attract people to other topics that we want to teach them, right? So one of the things that allow us to do that is that we are developing an RFID technology for indoor location. Because if you, if you can't locate a book that you will be moving around to make these temporal uh, stories, here we will be crazy, you know, because you know where's the book? Because we have these shelves organized with, from zero to 900. Right now, we will know where's the book because we will have this indoor location technology. So, so the technology here is, um, is, is a thing that solves a problem that came when you want to do things a little different to transform the book itself in a part of the marketing of the right? Scott? Oh, Diana, this is a, a very good question. Yes, the stories are not permanent. Will change and and will be changed. Um, I I think maybe a couple every semester, maybe every two months, maybe every three months. Uh, but we want to make it part of the content. That's that's why um, I put you the another example with the revolution of the 68 because for example when we when we are going around an, an event associated with a, a week or a special date we can make a story for that date and then we can go back for the story that we that we are using or we or we can go forward to another story so we will be temporal we will have a uh, temporal stories in our library Hi everyone, I just wanted to chime in. I'm so sorry that um, the slides are taking longer than it should be. Um, but if you have questions, um, we'll just probably take another minute and I will upload um, Sarah's presentation. We're gonna go over the, the time. So if you have to go, sorry, um, we'll, it'll be recorded. Um, and thank you again, Santiago. So if you have to go, Santiago, please feel free. Um, but thank you. Oh, I will be there. I, I really want to hear Sarah, you know? So, um, because I, I, I love academic libraries, I have to say, but I've been working with public libraries for around 10 years, so I only use academic libraries as a very special friends to learn from or to do things like the one that I told you. So I really want to hear from Sarah right now. And I have to say thank you again for the people who ask me questions I will be. Available in Medellin at gmail.com. Thank you. Well, we have the we have it ready. Sarah, you're up. Thank you. Okay. Um, good morning there. Here is good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes? Okay, perfect. Um well. Here is the presentation. I don't know if I need to do maybe this or not. Okay, you can see the completed slide. Because I, oh, okay, perfect. Um, well, hello again, my name is Arujoa. I am a school librarian from Peru. I will give you a general view about librarianship in, in my country as well as my experience as a librarian for secondary section in a private school. Uh, first of all, I would like to put you in context where is my country. Peru is located in South America. I know Santiago knows. <laughs> we are close. Uh, by the way, I envy the libraries in Colombia. Um, so here is a map. When I travel far away and people ask me where I am from, and I answer Peru, they immediately say Machu Picchu. That's why I put it here. Uh, but I am in the capital. I am now in Cusco. Uh, um, the capital here has 24 departments. 
uh, why I am mentioning the capital because uh, our career is concentrated mainly in the capital. We don't have schools in the other 24 departments. We only have uh, two universities where we can study library science, library and information science. Uh, these are the universities. San Marcos University is my university. I studied there. Um, the, it's, it's a national one, and there is another uh, called uh, book, Pontifical Catholic University of Peru, which is a private one uh, in the Faculty of Humanities. Um, everybody thinks that we are like a, a very young career. Um, these are the years of the creations of the schools, the library schools in this university, 1980 in San Marcos and 1986 at the, at the book. Um, it's like 38 years already. Um, from this year, I have discovered they, they are offering now at my university, at San Marcos University, a master's degree. Um, yeah, that's, that's new. Um, I also would like to show you this. Uh, you can see here a bill. Uh, this is approximately like thirty dollars. Uh, thirty dollars. Uh, it's a it's a expensive bill for us. And this guy that is there, I want to mention because when when Ray told me to talk about. Um, a librarianship in Peru, I felt so much responsibility and I started like researching about the beginnings of the careers. And this guy is the first librarian of Peru uh, with, with academic aesthetics, I mean. Um, we don't, we don't, we are not that conscious that he is like the first librarian of Peru because we consider him more like the famous historian uh, person that studied at San Marcos University too, and he wrote so many books, encyclopedias about history of Peru. Um, he's very well known and respectable. Um, but he is also the first li librarian of Peru who, who, who studied the career. Uh, he won a scholarship uh, by the Carnes Foundation in 1931. Um, he studied uh, in the school that created uh, Dewey at the um, University of Columbia. He was there for a year visiting university uh, libraries uh, in Chicago, Washington, New York, was Cleveland, I think. Uh, all that is well documented. Uh, there is one person, one colleague that has done even a thesis about this, uh, this person and how he contributes to their career uh, in Peru. So, he is the one who founded uh, the library school, the first library school. Uh, in 1944, and he also promotes a lot uh, international cooperation. Uh, when he started this school, he brought teachers from the U.S. Uh, to teach in this school. At the beginning, uh, four people came. And I selected some, some words he said. Uh, I really enjoy very much reading about him. Uh, I want to continue because I haven't finished. There is a thesis of 500, 500 pages. Okay, he said, no all people compose symphonies or paint pictures or perform surgery operations. However, they can be very capable people, very honorable and very distinguished intellectual and morally. Also, not all can be librarians. He said that not all can be librarians, that for that you need Love for, for, for books, with love books, um, um, mainly that at the time. Now I would add that you also need to love technology. Um, he also said, we also need a magazine. When he was, uh, he documented 
all that are informed in the archive where we can read, uh, I haven't wrote those, I read in the thesis of this colleague, uh, that he made informs about, about this scholarship he got. Um, he had these reflections and we, he said, we also need a magazine about the problems of librarians done by Latin Americans and for Latin Americans with the collaboration of the United States specialists because he really had a really uh, um, uh, collaboration uh, from colleagues from the U.S. He started that um, with this school and it was really helpful and it also helped the schools around Latin, Latin America. Uh, the performance of librarians in the Peruvian context, we have two, like two sectors uh, like in everywhere, the public and the private sector, but the ones that invest more in libraries are the private ones. Um, and I think one of the causes could be this. Uh, we don't invest as a country, we don't invest much um, in, in research, um, access to information. Uh, how you can access to information if you don't have uh, public libraries, if you don't have school libraries, if you don't have uh, well done school, uh, academic libraries. Um, here, Brazil is the one that invests more in research, and we are last with zero twelve. Um, and this is an example of a school libraries. Um, According to statistics done in 2015, less than 10% of the schools have a library. And actually, I am, I am, I am including that case because when I studied uh, my whole uh, primary and secondary, I never saw, I never, we never had a library in my, in my school. I discovered a library when I started studying, studying English uh, because this these academies for studying uh, second language had the libraries like in the U.S., right? Um, so here, uh, according to these statistics, said that um, there are many departments. We have 24, but there are 13 departments don't have any library, any school library. But I added since we are already 2018, I added. In Arequipa, they already have, there are, because there is also a library that, don, that was a donation from Mario Vargas Llosa. He has donated all his books uh, and created the library in there because he was born there. Um, so because of my experience of studying a public school, um, you know, having a library during the whole uh, during those, uh, during those periods, um, I started a personal project uh, during my vacations, uh, visiting uh, public schools to, to see if they, they already have a, a, a library. And I discovered very nice things. I discovered my school, my high school already has one. <laughs> um, and I also discovered the the, the government, the, the Ministry of Education, is sending 10 books in 2015, especially for the library. Books of fiction, encyclopedias. It was really a huge investment. Uh, but I also discovered uh, the librarians that are working in there were not trained and were not lending the books, which for me was amazing. Um, they are like you can see when a book is already is, it's been two years and they are new so it was interesting also to meet uh, the librarians that are in charge of those libraries uh, they it seem they want to to know how to um, uh, work better in the library but they are not trained so they asked me, how can I catalog these? How I do this? Um, 
that was uh, a very interesting experience, which I am also thinking about doing my thesis about this. Um, I am doing actually that. Um, well, I hope I can finish at the end of this year. In academic libraries, we are better. There are more investment in there, uh, especially the private ones. And we have more, but and we have like 125 in Lima and 430 in the other uh, in the other departments around Peru. Um, but there are many initiatives in here. Uh, actually, this one is uh, the home of the Peruvian literature. Um, is, 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 it, this um, home depends from the Ministry of Education. So this comes from the public sector. And for me, this is the best place uh, to promote uh, the love for, for reading and our culture and our uh, literature people. Um, here, for example, uh, there, is, there is going to be an activity about a literary map um, where we are going to, to go to places where these people, these uh, poet girls, um, have mentioned maybe in their books something about some places in, in Lima downtown. And, and with the literary map, uh, we, we go there, we walk, and we stop in some places and read something, some paragraph about these authors. Um, um, this is a very, very, very nice project. Uh, there are others that uh, the government is doing, the Ministry of Education, but I, this is my favorite. They also have a library. Is this one very nice because this used to be a train station. Um, and as I said, the private sector is the one who is investing more in libraries, and this is where librarians are concentrated. Uh, and like me, <laughs> I am working in a private school. This is a, a British school and has a British international curriculum who also, that also meets uh, the Peruvian national curriculum too. And it has Cambridge courses, ITCSP. Um, um, there is a program, an internal program for four or five, which is grade 12, I think. Um, um, for the IB uh, International Baccalaureate Program, if you want to do that one year more. Uh, now we are it's increasing the number of schools that has this IB diploma. We have now 52. 25 are actually from the government, and it's, it's all in Spanish, but mostly um, like this school is all in English. They, they have international uh, curriculum. The students study in English. I buy books all mostly in English. And this is our library. It is a small but very nice. Um, it, has been, it has been renovated, I think, not that far away, like five years or six years ago. Uh, the tables had connection to electricity for laptops because we this is like another room. Um, sometimes teachers come with the students and borrow laptops, uh, like being in class to do research um, or to work on projects. Uh, we also do here book discussions, which is an activity, a uh, free activity. Um, we have desk talks too. Um, all is organized in the DOE system. Our, our main objective is to promote love of reading, inspire life love learning, develop ability to locate, evaluate, and use information, and enhance academy honesty. Uh, yeah, my main um, goal is to support curriculum. To support curriculum, I feel that's a very important role. Um, so here are the objectives I will read. Library orientation program uh, that the school is going to start next week, uh, a new year school. 
Um, at the beginning uh, of the year, uh, we do orientation for all grade six uh, students who are uh, entering the secondary section. Here is from grade six. So we, we show them the library, how to use the library, how to find information and everything. Um, we also held a number of events to promote love for reading. We learn, uh, run library activities. Uh, I do two, book biting and bookworm. Bookworm is mostly doing um, um, volunteer, volunteerism. Um, book biting, yes, I give classes. Uh, it's increasing more and more. First I got five students, then five, then I got ten, then sixteen was the last it was a lot, a lot of students. Um, it's also important to support the learning profile. Here we have a learning profile. We can give points for good and for bad, depending. Um, also to promote the summer reading program. Uh, how do I collaborate with teachers? I collaborate with the Theory of Knowledge uh, course, uh, giving class about references. We use Chicago uh, that was chosen by the, by the teacher. Um, also, I give a class about research skills, which is very, uh, uh, one class is not enough, but since uh, mostly uh, I, I students are in the library uh, and have free periods a lot, so any time they can act. We do collaboration with English course too to promote, as I said again, love of reading for me that's important. I have a good fiction collection. And yeah, picking up good titles it is very important. And for that, you need to know students. I do surveys. Um, I talk to them. I try to know what are their likes. Uh, I feel more like a library mediator. I love that. Um, uh, also the orientations. Huh? And this is new. I started doing this last year to support the Creative Action Service Program, which is for IBS students. Uh, I collaborated with the Teacher of History of Peru and we were going to a museum, at the Style Museum, which is close to this school. And we were doing this um, I don't know how to call it, like uh, catalogs, because the, the idea is that when we see the styles in in the museum, you cannot touch them, obviously. So the idea is to to um, visitors can touch these ones. So we were preparing those. Um, also, uh, we have this support uh, thanks to this project the project I, I am doing in the, in the public schools. I discovered there is a public school near here, near our school. Um, we are supporting. Uh, they are very open and we were going last semester. We were helping because it, it was kind of mess and we were like, and they have materials and we were uh, like weaving, um, um, trying to make like make it appear like a, like a library and we are going to continue because we haven't finished. We are going to continue for, the, for this year and my dear students are interested in that. This is the library activity I do, the book writing, some pictures and since last year we participated for the first time in the careers, careers fair uh, because we got more books about, about, um, about careers actually it was a new collection because there was not um, when the director asked me okay how you can you can uh, get those books read more by students um, and I got this idea to participate in the careers fair and just said perfect okay so we participated and it was great uh, so we, we need to go to take books out um, mostly to finish to finish, I would like to say that I feel like uh, my role is mainly an identifier. I am 
<laughs> like always uh, when I talk to to students or teachers like thinking how the library can engage with those ideas with courses the, the more I learn about the curriculum the more I, I know students the more ideas I get every year is different that's why I love being a school librarian because I can put all my my abilities my the things I have learned because I am also a graphic designer a photographer <laughs> and um, I like to, to to put in practice all those uh, all those uh, things. Um, so I feel as a librarian, I feel more as, a, as an identifier. That's it. I think I have talked too much. Thank you very much. This is a picture of me when I went to the American Library Association conference for the first time last year. I love that. Uh, to remember that the expert in the library is you. And that's my email. Thank you very much. Sorry for the delay. You was giving my, my PowerPoint. Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much. Um, we have a comment here. Someone is saying that they love your programs in your school. And this person is also alumni of the college. Yes. And <laughs> in Boulder, you know, so if you want to say something. <laughs> Um, we're open for some questions. Feel free to ask. Uh, uh, we're open to um, hearing your thoughts and comments uh, before we wrap up. Really want to thank uh, Sarah for this uh, wonderful presentation. Okay, about the classification system, uh, to answer Diana, we use the DOE. Mostly schools use that. So that's, the, that's how I found this library and I am continuing. Well, uh, to give a sense of what a school librarian she like, is like in the public school, well, I think uh, that's a topic, actually, that's part of my research, uh, the role of the library, school librarian in, in, in public schools. Um, it is very interesting. I have discovered that since we don't have this custom of having libraries uh, as a public system since really ever, I think, um, even the librarians who have books don't want to lend them because they feel the book is so precious it's going to be lost and maybe the government is going to discount them and it is like an anthropolo anthropolo anthropologic uh, uh, study it's very interesting uh, but I but I think um, they need to be trained uh, definitely and also resources. The school uh, libraries in public sector need resources, more resources. The university has a program like training or certificate for people who work in libraries without library courses. Is that a question, Sari? <laughs> What I know is the National Library uh, is like in charge of training school librarians in public schools. There is something that needs to be solved in that sector. And mostly the people that are in there are from other careers, uh, but they don't have idea of what is what a school library should function. If you haven't had that experience too in your life, uh, I think it's a little more difficult. Uh, 
Um, I don't think so. I don't think the university has certificates for them. Maybe if they do the master, this new master that is open now at San Marcos, maybe. <laughs> but there are some levels in the government, like they are like auxiliars. They are not like librarians. Like they are like auxiliar, auxiliar lib librarian or something, technical librarian. What is you uh, what is your local or national library organization? Oh, what do you mean by that? Your local or national library organization. Oh yes, we have. Yes, we have. But it's very small. I think there are less than five almost five hundred is going to be and I am not I am not in there, but it's because um, you need to get the license when you get, get out from the university. <laughs> I am I am a member of the American Library Association. That's easier <laughs> because here, when you finish university after five years, you just got the bachelor degree, but but you need to to get the license what they call license i don't know what is the equivalent in in the in other countries uh, you need to do a, a professional inform or a thesis everybody does professional inform i have decided now that i will do that thesis there are only 12 pieces done since this school was created so hopefully i will be the 13. um But yes, there is a, an association, a, a library association in here. Uh, now it's run, it's run by my professor Ana Maria Talavera. Yes, I think they, they are they are doing uh, different things in this period. Yeah. There's also a question from Diana. The curriculum at college doesn't include courses for school librarians. Oh. The curriculum at college. College, you mean university? Oh, you mean in the schools? No, no. The thing is, the library is not including the curriculum yet. Uh, not even in 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 this uh, private school. Um, if I am giving those classes, it's because I have offered them, because I see there is a necessity and it's important um, from our career to to support in that area. In academy honesty and references for us is easier. Um, uh, but more than knowing a, a, a and a style for me is important they know how to recognize that source. Yes, oh no, no, students cannot download ebooks. Uh, phones are prohibited in this school, which I think is good. <laughs> I agree with that. They have to, to leave the phones in the locker when a school starts. Diana says, I am asking because I am from Costa Rica and we have two different concentrations in the librarianship program at the University of Costa Rica. One is library science and the other is school. No, we don't have that. We only have what I mentioned, two universities, one public and one private that offer the career. Um, Alejandra says, I think that most library associations in Latin America require you to be a licensed librarian and most of them are focused on academy libra libraries. Uh, yes, could be. So we'll take uh, one more comment or question. Feel free to type it in. Oh, thank you, Santiago. And I think Carlos is typing or 
Maybe not. Um, Did I miss any that? question? I don't know. This is the smallest. Well, yeah, there was several. Maybe there was a few that came earlier, but I think I think uh, people people can reach out to you, Sarah. Oh, there's here's the okay. last question. <laughs> it's okay. This was too long. Thank you very much. No, no, it's fine. There's one last question from Carlos. Can you or Santiago give us a sense as to how robust the system exists for downloading ebooks for South America? For downloading ebooks, uh, it is supposed there is this system uh, that is also in the, the public libraries in the US have. Hmm, what's the overdrive? We already we already can do that in here too, overdrive. But um, no, it's not. Only one school got that. Uh, one private school got that, and and the librarian told me that the books are not popular. That the students prefer the the book physically, and the same happening here. But I learned. I lend Kindles too. We have 30, 36 Kindles. Um, I bought uh, when there is an urgency. Sometimes I buy books by Amazon, and we give an ebook to the students. Yeah, I, I, I just tell that um, Overdrive is very popular here in Colombia too. We in the library network of Medellin, the, the one that I give you the URL, um, we have Overdrive, but you can uh, go to academic libraries if you want to see not only Overdrive, but Odilo too. You know, Odilo is um, a Spain competitor uh, from to Overdrive, and they have many more titles in Spanish than Overdrive. So in Colombia, we have almost all the, acad the academic libraries of big universities uh, access to Overdrive and other platforms. In public libraries, we are right now doing um, a consortium to access not only to Overdrive, but to Odilo too, and uh, to RB Digital. It's a uh, former called Senior. Uh, it's about um, diaries and magazines and that. And in my libraries, in my library network, right now, we are um, doing all the contract terms to access to Canopy, uh, the first um, documentary and uh, TV streaming service in libraries in Colombia. Thank you. Sounds very good. I think we should start wrapping up. I uh, want to thank uh, Sarah and Santiago for speaking again. Muchas gracias a todos. And I think they will be at ALA. I know Santiago will be there in New Orleans. Sarah, will you be there? I will be. Yeah, will be. And I think you will be here in the Bogota Book Fair, right? I, I have to see. We have to see. But Sarah, what did you say? That I would love to, but I, I haven't asked my the director of the school yet because we have a school classes at that time let's see hope so. okay well hopefully we'll see but in any case uh santiago will be there um you i'm sure you can uh, get in touch with him as well thank you all for coming and uh the re webinar will be recorded and shared and appreciate you all for staying have a great day thank you bye